What's your favorite scary movie? Oh, come on, you know I don't watch that shit. Why not? Too scared? No, no, it's just, what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. Hello! And welcome to episode 30, no idea. 40. 30, 40. And <laughs> cheers, Kedrin. We are really moving up in the world because uh, we are cheersing with champagne. Oh, we are. We're so fancy. And Tiffany glasses. Woohoo. I'm back. She's back. Oh, we're. Kim, was she, the person who's back is Kim. I'm she, back in the country and the state. Yep. And. And I have my compact podcast partner back. <laughs> uh, we haven't seen each other in ages. Nope. So forgive us if, I don't know, we're a little rusty. Yeah, a uh, little rusty. This is uh, Kim and Kat Stay Alive. Maybe. Maybe. We're a horror movie comedy podcast. Mm. And uh, oh, that's good. We're g- <laughs> <laughs> she was referring to to the champagne not to my <laughs> bad british accent as i said podcast which is what it sounded like it's delicious kim i don't know if you remember because you've been traipsing about the world we are going i'm gonna tell you a movie oh okay the whole thing all right and i'm gonna ask you questions about how you would stay alive in it done you're gonna know the end of the movie by the time i'm done talking you're gonna spoil the whole I'm gonna thing gonna spoil the whole Got thing it. yeah so sounds do, good do you recall any of this uh it's vaguely familiar cool my higher self will let me know. Oh, for so, fuck's sake. So zen is so, fuck she's now. She's so enlightened. <laughs> Ascended. Bali was amazing. I missed you. Oh, Real thanks. talks. I really did. I was in Bali. You're a <laughs> fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even try to miss me. <laughs> also, she apparently I met mean, some other you. soulmate. <laughs> And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I did meet some amazing other women that are now my lifelong friends mm-hmm. slash support group. And I love them. Cool. Uh, <laughs> doesn't make me love you less. I know. There's enough room in my heart I'm just for a ge- all of my loves. I'm just a jelly belly. <laughs> I can't help it. No, I'm not. I'm totally kidding. I It looked like you had a blast. But yes, Gabby, I love you. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Be here with me. You monster. Yeah, it looked like you had an amazing time. I, what did I do? Um, I worked on some, I got some writing done. That was cool. I saw a movie without you Uh that I, well, I mean, the movie I'm going to tell you about, I also saw that without (laughs) you. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what we do. (laughs) But I also saw a movie without you. And then I enlisted our Sammies. Oh, right. Uh, I have a present for you. Oh my God. I can't wait. What is the present? You can do it. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. She saw us. And then she put a fucking poll on Instagram and it was like, should she let, should I let her do it as part of our podcast? Oh my God. And it was like 92% said yes. And I was like, <laughs> fucking fine, everyone. <laughs> fucking fine. But I have a counter offer for you. Okay. Um, Lay it on that me. I have actual anxiety about watching Pet Cemetery. I was thinking Pet Cemetery, yeah. So like I would be more than happy to have you because I think I can listen to you tell it to me but like I don't know that I can sit through and I don't remember the old one well enough to like have it affect my right, choice. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like I basically remember Zelda from it and that's it because it gave me nightmares for years. I don't even remember that. I just remember the little boy. The, and yeah. the big man. No, yeah, no idea what you're talking Who's about. Who's like Herman Munster, I think. What? <laughs> Herman Munster is in it? Isn't he? Is he? <laughs> the guy in overalls? I don't recall. I clearly don't recall. I don't remember. Well, so I'm <laughs> giving that one to you. I will give you that one. I, okay. First off. Yeah. You're welcome. I'm giving you us. Yeah. I meant to Thank show you. up with a counter offer for myself because oh. I was like, what's coming out? And like Pet Cemetery crossed my mind, but I was like, oh, I know she doesn't want to do that. So that's not really a fair trade. Fair enough. So what is your trade? I'm I didn't hear come with one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking about it until this exact moment and then right. didn't do it. <laughs> okay. Well, if you don't want to do Pet Cemetery, no, I'm, I'm happy, happy to do Pet Cemetery. I'm saying I might get an- another one too. Oh, okay. 
bitch drives a tough bargain. This was like a huge no, one. It was. And but just to be clear, everybody, I did invite Kim to come. Like we were going to I had a date. I, I already know. had plans. She always has a date. I mean, it's just it's always. Not that I always have a date. It's that I <laughs> work nights and therefore I have like a couple nights off. Yeah. And but I'm really excited need to plan accordingly. I'm really excited to tell you about it and I've been working on impressions of it. Okay. <laughs> so get excited. I okay. <laughs> Sure, <laughs> I'm fine. It's gonna be great. It's gonna it's gonna um, be performance. Well, art. I think it'll be great for us to be able to do it on yeah. the podcast. So I thought I thought about you know I really I really sat down and open heart thought about it. It's because you're so enlightened now. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. She already saw it. I actually haven't. Yeah. So let's do it. That that'll be maybe we should do it soonish. The next your movie. I think we <laughs> <laughs> yes unless that like falls. today is your movie so two weeks from today yeah that's yeah that that is definitely a that's possibility what is happening. great it's done <laughs> do we have anything else uh, I don't know I don't know what I should talk about I'm dating two people right now cool I don't They're both British I'm assuming one's British ah <laughs> I of course <laughs> <laughs> not the not the British because he the british i have been dating and talking about yeah who is in england and then we talked a little when he was in england but a lot of me just contacting him and then i so once i went to bali i was kind of like living my own life and mm -hmm. then i just haven't heard from him so is he back i think so yeah i think he was supposed to get back at the beginning of april but i haven't really heard from him and so oh when i was at the retreat three of the women there met their husband on tinder Shut up. And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Wow. You shut your was fucking it mouth. In the beginning of Tinder? It was, I mean, they're all currently married, but some only for a couple years. Like, I, I think one's like, like more recent. I think one's like within the past two years. Okay. One was like three to four years ago. I just so feel like the saturation say, of Tinder has. Yeah. I would not say that that's the beginning of Tinder. No, though. It's, like, no it's definitely not for sure. Yeah. They're all pretty, re fairly, re like one, they had their honorary like honeymoon in bali like he came and met there after after our retreat oh shit so like yeah, yeah so super recent so, so how did they do it well they manifested <laughs> all right I, I, like i say that like with a little bit of a laugh but it's actually true that's great they all talked about it that way so i was like i guess i'm getting back on tinder all right let's do this so i did since, since I'm clearly involved in this. Yeah. Let, let us do this. <laughs> I actually went on a Tinder date when I was in Bali. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> With an Australian. Yeah. Of course. Of course. <laughs> well, it's Bali's very close to Australia. So there's a lot of Australians there. Okay. Did, is he? Does he live in Australia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was kind of like just for fun. It was like a double date because one of the other girls had like someone that was happened to be coming to Bali too that she like knew from mm -hmm. Instagram, but like hadn't met in person yet. And mm -hmm. so she was trying to meet him. So then I was like, okay, well, I'll invite one of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking living your um, life. So it was like a bunch of girls and these two dudes. And then all the other girls went home and it was just like the four of us. And it was actually really fun. <laughs> living your life. I love it. <laughs> and then... Oh, so yeah. So then I got back and I met two different guys on Tinder and one of them just asked for the podcast link today. So <laughs> All right. um, I, don't so I don't know if he'll be listening. I feel like this, you know, it weeds out the cowards. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> You're not ready to hear real talk with Kim Burns. Then uh, it's funny because the first one I went out with was like very like like they're very kind of different and opposite people a little bit but mm -hmm. they're very like uh, he was very like oh my gosh like i'm just like visualized my life and da, 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 and all this shit's like happening coming true he's like the best fucking energy like he's so just like ha like just like ha like really good energy like very happy and just like oh my god we're bringing this in we're making shit happen da, 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 all these things that's awesome Which i love yeah um but then there's some other things that i'm like we need to have conversations about these. <laughs> yeah i mean there's always those there's always then, a thing the other one is like goth and what <laughs> he doesn't like look goth but i guess he like used to be hardcore like goth goth i um, am but he still considers himself goth. gonna need a picture <laughs> he, d he looks like normal person this um, is amazing but he said me. back in the day he was like goth. went out partying goth that is amazing to um me. but he's like so funny 
Mm. And he's the British one. So he's much more like subdued and, and you know, fucking dry. Dry. Yeah. yeah. And British people, the manifestation thing is on all that woo and stuff is a little. Listen to you being an expert on the Brits. I mean, if well, there are a any, lot of them yeah. say it too. He looks perfectly normal. Oh, he looks not goth at all. But he, but I can see it in his eyes that are behind sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> he just wears black. He's cute. I love it. He has a really cute picture. Whoop! <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 damn! <laughs> How you doing? Was this at the Kardashians' wedding? Because that was the fucking <laughs> aesthetic for Kim and Kanye's wedding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> How fun. Yeah. Very exciting. So that's happening. Oh, and the Australian that you met Mm -hmm. popped back into my life. Shut the fuck up. He Facebook friended me while I was in Bali. Okay. And then started watching my stories stories on Facebook and was like, where are you? And I said, Bali. And then, I don't know, commented on maybe a couple things. And then at one point, I think I was back maybe. And then he was like, are you back in town? And then I was like, yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe we chatted a little and he's like, we should hang out again and i was like okay yeah and i was like just you know let me know when you're free yeah (laughs) and he's like or you can let me know or something like that like he kept doing the same thing where he keeps putting it back on me and i'm like oh my god that's so weird with you that's real i don't have a obviously i'm married but i have a friend who does that as well and i've just i've just stopped playing the game like it's a really bizarre game I, I've just stopped like she she always wants to hang out she's like we should hang out and then we like make plans and she flakes and I'm not even like mad about it like I'm just kind of like that's who she is yeah but then she's like when can we get drinks and I'm like whenever you yeah. g- give you me your me. dates <laughs> and she's like okay I will and then I don't hear anything yeah why haven't we gotten drinks yet because you haven't told me when you're free right i told you what my stipulations were you tell me when and where and i will be there yeah like that's that's it he he just and then because it kind of we like he brought up a little bit of like us going out before and i was like yeah i mean i just like didn't hear from you he's like well you can use like the phone works for you too or something and i was like but i did reach out to you yeah (laughs) i'm just not gonna keep doing it yeah it's reciprocal you're right like i was just like so even like we left the conversation of just being like that we said we would go out again but like i doubt we will because i don't think he'll contact me what because he like for world? some reason really needs me to do it to him but i'm like bro i set up our entire second date like yeah. that was all my stuff yeah. i picked you up right like fucking your turn yeah your turn dude that's fucking weird it was really weird Ugh, well whatever he was very um, nice though yeah but, but it's yeah like i'm like I, I don't got time can't. for that. <laughs> I, as your best friend, don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. Everything's just great. Oh, Bali was so great. Happy. Well, I'm really glad you're back. Thanks. We can re- rekindle our friendship so I can remind you why you're friends with me since you have all new friends now. Oh, great. I look forward to that happening. <laughs> of me, of I'll me be waiting coming for it. <laughs> yeah. I you set you up for that one. Making this enjoyable. Yeah, I set that. I, I set myself <laughs> up for that one, and I'll see myself out. Goodbye. <laughs> do you want to hear about what I watched? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yes. Should we do reviews? Oh yeah, let's do reviews. Since we got some. Yay! Thanks, guys. You really came through. I think because they heard us cry. <laughs> we did. Crying. I mean, on the last ones, just guilt little trips sad, work. little sad Charlie Brown people. <laughs> 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 okay. Should we do two? Yeah. Okay. The first one is Miss Metal 27. Ooh, Miss Metal. Hey. Oh my god. Thank you. That's for your new Brit. He likes more sad music. Oh. Okay, I'll give uh, this next one. I'll give him one for him. Okay, <laughs> okay. Like um, Joy Division. Do you know what that is? Kim, I don't know music. The, the Cure, I guess, is like slightly. Okay, I have to come. It's I don't know what the their social version of that. sounds like. It's really going to be up to you with the vo- the vocalization of it. So here we go. Okay, <laughs> I'm not sure that I really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know the Cure, but right, like well, some of just, his other let's stuff. Let's just see what comes out of our hearts. Our our black black hearts. Black black. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is for you, Rachel the Thirteenth. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> da 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 da. Ba da 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 
That's what you were looking for, right? I'm sure. Yeah. Great. I don't know. I'm, I'll ask him. I'm recording. <laughs> I'm re- releasing that. You're, you're welcome, Rachel, the 13th. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much. It really means a lot, and we really appreciate you. Yeah, you're the best. Do you want to hear about my shit? Sure. Great. So I actually got to watch one of my favorite movies. I've seen this before, but you haven't seen it. Okay. And I love it. Exciting. Um, so the only thing that I learned, obviously, because I wasn't watching it for this reason when I first saw it, choice wise it's difficult right okay so we'll there are some choices but you'll you'll kind of see what i mean okay do you have any idea what i did no i have no idea okay. i did let the right one in oh uh, okay yeah that makes sense yeah you talk about it a lot yeah so it's i did the original the original version. Okay. yeah so it's all in swedish uh swedish yeah it's all in swedish i've seen both i think the one with chloe moritz is good too i just you know they're very different one of the girls on the retreat, her cousin is Chloe Moretz. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. She's a great actress. Yeah. She's- and I was like, that's so weird because Mitch is like old, like Mitch's cousin or uncle or something was like neighbors like and family friends with them or something really, really weird. Like I was like, of all the people that you're cousins so with, many so connections weird. to Chloe Grace Moretz. Moretz. That's yeah, it's very so weird. weird. Okay. So let the right one in. All right. Dead or alive. First person is Oscar. Alive. Next person is dad. Alive. Next person is Ili. Dead. Next person is head bully. Dead. Next person is Bo. Like as in like boyfriend. Like Alive. someone's boyfriend. Uh, next one is Blondie. Alive. Next one is Catman. Alive. <laughs> oh, and next I one hope. is <laughs> Bully's Bro dead there <laughs> fully his brother not like his, brother like like because i didn't want it, it's not like his bro like what's up bro it's i definitely brother. thought bro okay so i'm glad uh, you cleared it up yeah and you said dead i think so okay all wouldn't right. have made a difference for anything. <laughs> yeah. all right so we open on a pretty not a super fancy apartment building, a very utilitarian looking apartment building in Sweden. And Sweden is cold as fuck. This mm-hmm. whole movie, I was just chilly willy. <laughs> just snow on the ground. They ice skate for gym class. Like it is chilly. Really? Yeah. Are you it is that? Okay. Chilly willy. It's fun. There is a little meek blonde boy and he is in his room and we're kind of watching what what he's doing in the reflection of the window and it's nighttime. So you know when it's nighttime and you're looking out a window and the lights are on inside, you're kind of looking at your reflection, basically. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And he's holding a knife in his hand and he's saying, squeal like a pig. Squeal, piggy, squeal. And But he's clearly like unsure of it. Like okay. he's, he's How old is say- he? <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> early middle school. I'm gonna say uh, early. What the mid- fuck does that mean? It means like sixth or seventh grade. Okay. Like thirteen. I'm gonna say like thirteen, but he's like a scrawny thirteen okay. for sure. And he is so he's looking at himself in the reflection of the window, and he sees a car pulling up outside, and it's a car he's never seen before, and it's an older man getting out of the car with his daughter. They're moving in to the apartment building. Okay. So he's watching this happen and the old man uh, smiles at his daughter. He's not, he looks older. He doesn't look grandpa age completely, but he looks like an old dad. If that makes sense. And he smiles at her and the young blonde boy, Oscar, like is just transfixed. Like he's clearly so excited that somebody else is moving into the apartment building. Mm -hmm. And then they walk in and he picks up the knife again and starts practicing saying, squeal like a pig. And we don't really know why he's saying it. So the dad and his daughter are moving into the apartment building and they're moving in right next door to the young boy's apartment. And so he's, the young boy is now outside, sort of in the snow, just like in the courtyard, just kind of like 
doing whatever and he's watching them move in and he sees that the dad starts like boarding up the windows from the inside and he's like weird next day oscar our little blonde boy is in class and there is some sort of like cop or fireman i don't know what they're called in sweden but like he's talking about crime and arson and (laughs) (laughs) cop slash fireman Yeah, yeah And he's talking about that there was a fire started and they found a body inside and they he asks the class, how did we know that the body inside was murdered before the fire started and that the fire was arson? And I'm like, what class is this? (laughs) Like they're like sixth grade. Like it was it was intense. Like I'm sure it was somebody like coming as like a bring your cop right, to work yeah. day kind of thing. This is like their version of dare. Yes, but I'm just like, this is what, this is intense. So We had like just Huff McGruff, what's his name? <laughs> Huff McGruff? Something McGruff. Huff, no, I think it's Huff McGruff. I love it. Uh, what's his name? I think it's Tuff Det- McGruff. Detective McGruff? It's a dog, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With his trench coat and his hat. Yeah. Tr- McGruff. McGruff. It's Something McGruff. McGruff. <laughs> it is McGruff. But I can't remember his name. Maybe, I think it's just Detective McGruff. <laughs> it's Huff McGruff. Huff McGruff. Is it Huff McGruff? <laughs> no. That's a really I dumb name if it is. is. I, just, I think it does rhyme, though. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait to figure out what this is. <laughs> we're going to look it up and we're going to be like, it's Kevin. It's Kevin McGruff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guarantee we'll be tweeted this the second this episode comes out. <laughs> 27 people will be like, it's fucking Kevin McGruff, you assholes. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So the the copperman is like, you know, how do we know that it was? A, I don't know if he's a copper or fireman. I like it. He's about murder and fire. Whose jurisdiction is it? I, I don't like know. Yeah. yeah. He's a slashy. And, the, and the, the, the Swedes don't have the same uniform. So I'm like, this could be a fireman's uniform. Right, I don't yeah, know. You can't tell. And Oscar raises his hand. He's the only one that raises his hand and he's he's says you knew that the person died before the fire started because there was no smoke in the lungs. Whoa. Yeah. And I was like, that is fucking Good smart. One, bro. Yeah. And the the copperman is like, ha, what kind of books do you read? And Oscar's just like books. <laughs> like I was like, you're a creepy kid. So the kid then the camera kind of pans over to the kid sitting next to Oscar because the camera is looking at the back of Oscar's head. Right. And the kid next to him is looking at him very menacingly, (gasps) like in a way that's like, I'm going to fuck with you Mm. later. Little shit kid. So now we're outside of class. And as predicted, the menace that was sitting next to him is the head bully. Mm -hmm. And he's fucking with Oscar Mm. and he's calling him a pig and Uh. telling him to squeal like a pig. No. Yeah. It's a fucking bummer. So now we cut to back to the apartment building and we're in the apartment with dad, with the new dad that just moved in. Right. And it's just him in his apartment and he's getting supplies together and he's scrubbing out these large canteens, like jugs that you might look kind of like milk jugs, but they're very utilitarian giant jugs. And he's cleaning those out and then he's got a funnel and then he also has this thing where it's like got a uh, a gas mask on it, like what you might put on your face if you're trying to give someone oxygen if that an EMT might have where it's got like a bag attached to it. Okay. Except uh-huh, instead uh-huh. of the bag, it appears to be some sort of gas can. Okay. With like a mask over it. So he's just, you know, getting his stuff together and he kind of puts it all into like a doctor's bag, mm-hmm. like an old timey doctor's bag. And we're like, all right. So now we see the dad out in the snow Everything is snow. Everything is always snow. (laughs) It's very cold. And we see him. He's kind of in a hurry. And he walks past this guy on the street and says, do you have the time? The guy goes to look at his watch. And as he does it, the dad puts the gas up to his face and he passes out. (gasps) And we're like, what the fuck? So now we're with the dad. And he's. And this is daytime? It's it. You'll. I realize now it's probably like um, evening. Because the very next scene, it's now getting darker. Okay. It's, it's dark. And the dad is dragging this body 
into the woods Yeesh. through the snow. So we see him put the funnel into the jug. Mm-hmm. Then he strings the guy up by his feet from a tree. Mm-hmm. Then he puts the funnel and the jug underneath the dude. And then he very strategically slits the man's throat. Oh. And the blood funnels into the jug. Oh. As this is happening, he hears a dog barking. And he sees a poodle running toward him. And he's like, get the, get away. Get, get out of here. Then he hears the poodle's owners. Mm-mm. And so the poodle's owners, he hears them walking through the snow and the poodle starts barking. And so he quickly like gathers up all of his supplies and just bolts. But like, obviously there's still a fucking body Body hanging hanging from the fucking tree. Okay. So he runs away. The two people walking this poodle see it and they're like, what the fuck? Cuts away. We now are back at the apartment with Oscar and he's bored he comes outside and he's just kind of like playing with his little knife you know just kind of sitting in the snow in this little courtyard it looks like there's like a really shitty old-timey chernobyl looking jungle gym out in the middle of this <laughs> courtyard <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but it doesn't look super fun to play on it looks it looks more dangerous less fun got it but he's just sitting out there we obviously know he doesn't really have many friends oh Snow on the ground, and it's nighttime. And he's talking to himself, practicing standing up to the bullies with his knife at a tree, like stabbing at the tree. And the camera pans, and we see that there's a girl standing on top of the jungle gym, just watching him. He's saying, squeal like a pig, squeal like a pig. Then he turns around, and he's totally like, (laughs) hi. He knows that it's the girl that just moved in, but uh-huh. they haven't actually met. She jumps down. She's wearing almost no clothes. Like she looks like she's wearing like summer clothes or pajamas. Uh-huh. And like Oscar is like bundled up. And she just looks at him and says, just so you know, I can't be your friend. Okay. And leaves. Aggressive. I know. I'm like rude. He didn't even ask to be your friend. Jeez. Like what a fucking assumption to make. So... He's just kind of like, that's weird, but intrigued by her. She runs away, goes inside. Now we're back with dad and he's on the train and he's got his little old timey doctor bag next to him and he opens it up. He realizes he left the jug with the body. Mm. He's like, fuck. So now we cut to him back at the apartment and he's being screamed at by his daughter. And she's like, do I have to do this myself? Oh, Oscar doesn't hear this. We hear this. And she's like, looks, she's 12, 12 as well. She tells us she's 12 later. So back at school, Oscar is hiding from the bullies. They're they're like in a locker room and he's hiding in like the bathroom part of the locker room (laughs) or not even a bathroom, more like just like, it almost looks like a closet. Like he's like hiding in the closet. Oscar. He comes out of the bathroom when he hears that they've past that they've left so he's walking home by himself and he comes in and his mom says oscar you need to come straight home from school because there's a mystery killer out there and we notice that like when he walks home it's actually like kind of dark and it's also in sweden so i'm like is sweden like ireland where like in the winter it gets dark at like 3 45 i'm not clear about it if anyone I'm would like to tell either. us. It's pretty northern, though. I bet so it is. I it bet it like is. gets dark really fast, especially in the winter, because he's walking like walking home from school, like almost in the dark. So his mom's like, you need to come straight home. Mm-hmm. But obviously for Oscar, he's like, I can't come home until like the bullies have mm-hmm. left. He doesn't say that to her, though. Yeah. But she's like, you need to come home. There's a killer out there. So. He, there's a killer out there. See, there's a killer out there. So he's like, "Okay, mom, yeah, whatever." He then steals the paper that had the article on the front page about the killer, and he goes into his room, and we see that he has a scrapbook of murders yeah. that he's cut out of newspapers, which is problematic. Uh, Listen, 
I'm a murderino. I get it. Mm-hmm. You and I both like reading books about serial killers. I do love them. Regardless, I feel like this would be a bit of a red flag if my 13 year old boy was like cutting out pictures I'd be of concerned. murders. But isn't that weird? Because like, why? Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like in our apartment on Ogden, you literally had a book that was like born to be killers. Born to be Still killers. Have it. <laughs> yes. And and like I remember people coming over being like, whose book is that? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, but, what's it matter? <laughs> but I wasn't 13, though. That's what I'm saying. It's like, why have we drawn that line? Right. I'm, I'm genuinely asking. Like, because I'm like, I wouldn't, like, I think you were a dork if you, like, cut out a bunch of murder articles. But I wouldn't be like, you're a, mur- you're going to kill me. <sighs> Do you see what I'm saying? I feel see what you're saying and I also feel like there is a line there's something about like the unformed brain that's like obsessed with those kind of things of like a child that I'm like and I guess also it being paired with him being bullied constantly yeah and being from parents that are divorced which I didn't tell you but we happen to know that they're divorced I'm like okay maybe that's where the problem like if he wasn't bullied I'd be like you have weird interests but because he's bullied, I'm like, I feel like this is coming from a place of trauma. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's a, I don't know. It's a, it's a weird, what, I'm just how saying, do people have kids? I, yeah, I was just going to say, I was like, I mean, if it was my kid, I'd be like, well, he's going to murder me in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> how do people have kids? I don't get it. It's terrifying. Okay. So now we cut to a restaurant. Clearly the town restaurant. It's a bunch of grown-ups who live in the apartment building as well, which we ascertain from the conversation. We're just sitting around having some vodka. Oh, no, that's Russian. I'm sure they're having vodka, though. Racist. <laughs> you know, so, super racist. And uh, they're just sitting around. They're talking. They're loud. And it's like three older men and then a blondie woman. And dad is actually sitting at a table behind them mm. by himself. Drinking a large glass of milk. Isn't that weird? Talk Soup's about weird. Talk about red flags. Soup's weird. <laughs> I mean, a grown man what drinking if, a glass of milk. What, what if I fuck? went on a date and he ordered a large glass of milk? I'd be like, I gotta go. go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. If I get that text, I'm literally sending a helicopter to wherever you are. Calling 911. I'm not even going to write anything except a milk. <laughs> Ma'am, why are you calling 911? My friend is on a date with a guy drinking milk. (laughs) It's fucking terrifying. Who does that? So anyway. You know what that reminds me of is Lee on The Professional. He drank a lot of milk. And he was a hitman. Oh, yeah. What is that? There's not even... It's a myth that there's a ton of protein in milk. I mean, not protein. Calcium. It's a myth, actually. You can get calcium, way more calcium from totally other things. Like broccoli has like... 12 times the amount of calcium in it that a glass of milk does. Really? It's all big milk telling us. <laughs> <laughs> telling us that we got to drink milk when we don't. <laughs> big milk? I didn't know big milk. Yeah, was, it's all a conspiracy was, cooked up by big milk. I didn't know. I'm serious. Okay, so. Well, clearly dad has succumbed Yeah, to he's them. succumbed to big milk. So the people sitting at the table, they're like, let's go over and like see if he wants to have a drink with us and they try to invite him over and he's super antisocial, barely even like responds to someone sitting at the table with him and he leaves and they're just kind of like Meh, what a like they actually seem like really nice people they mm. seem like hard people but like kind-hearted people if that makes sense and one of them is named Joka, which is spelled jock with an e on the end and i think it's pronounced Joka. Mm -hmm. So I like that name. Now we're back at Oscar's apartment and he says to his mom, I'm going to go outside to the courtyard. And he looks up at the girl's window once he gets out there and it's all boarded up. So he can't see if she's in there. So he's sitting on the playground and he's playing with a Rubik's cube. Did you ever play with those? Of course. Did you ever solve them? Nope. Sure. (laughs) Okay, great. Did you? No, of course I didn't. Like, <laughs> of course I didn't. <laughs> but like, if you had said like, yeah, I solved them all the time, I'd be like, yeah, me too. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to ask you first. 
<laughs> You're a bitch. <laughs> so the girl comes down and she's very interested in the puzzle. Like she seems like she's never seen one before. Mm-hmm. And so he has one whole side solved, but then the other sides aren't. Yeah, dude, that's always the problem. Yeah, like he had all the white part solved. God, I feel you. And uh, she's super interested and he, he gives it to her and he's like, you can give it back to me tomorrow. And she's like, I might not be here tomorrow. And he's like, well, okay, like the next day. I know where you live. I'm just saying, if you want to play with the Rubik's Cube here, weirdo. And then he says, you smell funny. <laughs> and she kind of is like, una- like, not even embarrassed, more just like, I don't know what that means. Like, I what am I supposed to do about that kind right, of thing? Right. And he's like, aren't you cold? And she says, I've forgotten how. He leaves, mm-hmm. and we hear her t- stomach grumble. So now we're back with our restaurant friends and Joka, and they're all walking back home to their apartment, the big apartment building. And he says the sweetest thing, which I love. I love, like, big, tough men showing emotions. He's walking home with his friend, and he says, thanks for another evening steeped in friendship and merriment. Aww. And then he gives his friend a big hug and goes I inside. Love it. And I was like... <laughs> Oh my God. Adorbs. Thanks, thanks for a lifetime steeped in friendship and merriment, Kim. Oh, ditto. I love it. So he's walking home. They've kind of split off. So clearly, Joka lives in the in the apartment building with Oscar and the dad and all of that. But the other guy, they have split off at a point, and he's going somewhere somewhere else. And so Joka has to go underneath of an overpass. And as he's going underneath the overpass, he hears someone say help me we can't see it it's all in shadow we're kind of like a wide shot Mm -hmm. of the overpass just seeing what's happening and we see that like someone is really really hurt reaching out to him like can't can't get up can't move and so he picks up the person under the overpass and it's a tiny tiny little person like he's able to just scoop her up with Mm -hmm. like no problem and he's gonna walk her to the hospital because she's not wearing any fucking clothes when all of a sudden attacked and we just see that she fucking like wraps her entire body like around him as he's holding her and Mm -hmm. like a fucking boa constrictor and she tackles him to the ground and she's drinking his blood Mm -hmm. she gets her fill he's not quite dead yet so she sits up and she just grabs his head and slowly turns it around to the back until he's dead. Oh. It was bad. I'm like, can you at least do it quick? Uh, I mean, please. Oh, God. So. Poor Yoka. You're such a good dude. Poor little sweetie. I know. So she does that, and then she starts crying. Oh, shit. And we see that it's, obviously, it's Ely. Right. We notice, however... That she's been seen by somebody. It's a man up in the apartment building above the overpass that is standing out on his balcony and he has no less than 30 cats (laughs) and he's holding four of them. (laughs) And I was like, this is my dude. I was like, so you? Yeah. But he is like in shock. Like he's complete. He literally watched the entire thing. Oof. So now we're back at the apartment and Oscar hears through the wall, dad yelling at Ely, like furious at her. Catman is now running to the restaurant to say to the friends that are still there, Joka was killed, Joka was killed. So they all go to the overpass and he shows them exactly where the body was. The body is gone and there's just blood under the snow but the blood was all covered up. So they have to actually dig through the snow to see where all the blood was to like, because mm-hmm. they're like, Catman, you're crazy. Who would kill Joka? And he's like, no, really, he was attacked by a small child. And they're like, you're, the cats have gone to your brain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> start saying that to you now. The cats have gone to my brain. <laughs> so now the dad is dragging Joka's body through the woods with his backwards head it is rough and he comes to a lake 
the lake is like a lot frozen over, but not completely frozen over. Like it places where there may be like a tree that's fallen in or like there's a log or some rocks like it can't really freeze as well Mm -hmm. there. So he finds a place where he can throw the body into the water and then he gets like this red stick or like this pole or something and he's trying to like push the body like kind of underneath like lodge it underneath something so Mm -hmm. it'll stay still and Mm -hmm. freeze there Mm -hmm. he's disposed of the body in the lake next day oscar goes out to the courtyard and he finds the rubik's cube on the bench out there and it is solved completely (gasps) oh that and he's like what the fuck so when he gets home from school she's outside waiting for him and she says do i smell better and he says i mean yeah like (laughs) good job taking a shower and he says how old are you and she says 12 more or less and he says well when's your birthday and she says i don't know and he says well don't you get presents and she's like no and he's like so you don't get any presents on your birthday she's like i don't know my birthday is and i don't get presents no stop rubbing it in (sighs) what the fuck and so he just hands her the Rubik's Cube. And he's like, well, consider this a birthday present. Aww, it was really sweet. sweet. So back at school the next day, we see that he is studying really, really hard. And when everybody gets up to leave for cla- like for the end of class, he stays there. And the teacher is like, Oscar, aren't you, aren't you coming? And he's like, I have more studying to do. But he's kind of like closed his book so that she can't see what he's reading it's like an old dusty book and he opens it back up and we see a picture of so-and-so morse who invented the morse code wow so he's reading about the guy who invented the morse you mean code. huff morse huff morse yeah <laughs> kevin morse <laughs> so he's walking home it's super dark and I wrote, does it get dark in Sweden really early? Because again, I'm like, why is it so dark when he's leaving school? But I think it's like Ireland. The bullies are waiting for him. I don't so, like the bullies. I know. I don't either. So they're waiting for you outside. This is your first question. Mm. What does he do? And what do you do? Um, they're waiting for him outside where? The school. school. But there's not really a lot of people around. They've made it so that um, they've cornered him sort of behind something where they're not going to be bothered or seen Mm. as they fuck with him. So what does he do and what do you do? I think he like tries to pull out like his knife and be like squeal like a pig, but like is bad at it, like kind of stumbles and then they make fun of him and win him, like bully him more for even trying to do it. Okay. And then I... (laughs) (laughs) Are you laughing at me bumping my head four times? No, no, no. no. I was laughing at my own thought. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> what are they do tell um i i'm like <laughs> is it too much that i pull my knife out and stab them in the stomach? <laughs> no girl you're trying to stay alive you do you do you so is that your answer yep one ding for you good he doesn't do or say anything oh. he's too scared and what the bullies do is one of them there's three of them One of them grabs him by the neck and the head bully tells the other one to whip him with a switch. The fuck? Yeah. Super fucked up. And the head bully is like the kind of head bully that's clearly also kind of bullying the, the, the sub bullies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, You know, because neither of them seem super into this, but they do it anyway. Right. Right. So they're whipping him and the head bully is just looking at them and then he, makes a motion for them to switch so the kid who was whipping him is now holding his neck Mm -hmm. and the kid who was holding his neck is now whipping him but the kid that's now whipping him hits him in the face Mm -hmm. and it like leaves a mark and the head bully gets really pissed because now there's proof that they were fucking with him Mm -hmm. like now Mm -hmm. you know he can go home and say like look what they did to me so they run away he gets home and his mom's like, what the fuck happened to you? And he says, I fell during gym. <laughs> and I was like, just oh, tell your mom. God. Just oh, tell your God. mom. So now he's outside again. And he hands, and Ely comes out as well. And he hands her a little piece of paper. 
and it has the Morse code on it. Oh. And he says, we can talk to each other through the wall because they share a wall. Mm -hmm. And she says, asks him what happened to his face. Mm -hmm. And he tells her and she says, hit back. And he's kind of like, doesn't really say anything, but like his face is like, I can't. And she's like, hit harder than you dare and then I'll help you. And he's kind of like, what the fuck is with this bitch? Mm -hmm. But he's, you can tell he's like kind of into her and doesn't have a lot of friends. Dad is watching them from the window. Ely comes back upstairs to her apartment and dad is in the room that has the wall that is shared by Oscar's apartment. Mm -hmm. And she comes in and she's like, get out. She's like, this is my room now. And she's super dismissive. And she sits in front of the wall and they both Morse code each other sweet dreams. It's cute. So fucking cute. It's so fucking cute. I'm in love with them. Yeah. It's adorable. 12 year old love is the best. Yeah. We actually almost named our boy and girl cats Oscar and Ely. Oh, because they're just like the cutest little babies. So now, next day, we're in PE class and Oscar goes to his PE teacher and says, I want to sign up for weightlifting. And he's like, yeah. All right. Yeah. And he's like, great. Come to practice after school. Like, that's cool. what you do. Great. Cool, cool, cool. So the next evening, Ely and Oscar are hanging out and they're hanging out uh, like at a candy shop. Like they're hanging out out and about, not just at the mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. apartment. And he buys her candy and she's like, I don't want it. And he looks kind of hurt by that. And so she says, you know what? I'll try it. So she takes a bite of like one little nonpareil, like a tiny little chocolate Mm -hmm. morsel. And next thing we know, it cuts to her violently throwing up behind the building. Whoa. And he comes around to the other side and he just gives her the sweetest little awkward hug. (sighs) And it's like clearly the first time they've like had physical Mm -hmm. contact with each other. And it's just, like, so awkward and cute. And he just, like, feels so bad but also knows, like, oh, you knew that you were going to throw up from that and you ate it anyway. I love them. So then Ely says, Oscar, do you like me? And he says, a lot. Mm -hmm. And she says, if I wasn't a girl, would you like me? And he's like, I suppose. Why? And she doesn't say anything. Which I also was like, way to not be heteronormative, Oscar. <laughs> like, he's just like, what does it matter? I like you. What does yeah. it matter to me? So now Oscar's in the car and we learn that he's heading to his dad's house. Okay. His dad lives in the middle of goddamn fucking nowhere. He just <laughs> lives in Antarctica. Okay. Sweden. The city of Antarctica, Sweden. Got it. And it's like a house that is just surrounded by only snow. There's no other houses around or trees or anything. It's just snow and a house. I am not into it. So, but he seems to be having a blast. They're having fun, snowy times. The dad is like pulling him on a sled uh, on some sort of snowmobile type of thing. And he's just like, la, 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 so fun with dad. And the dad is foxy. And I'm like, hey, hey, snow fox, how you doing? On that, can I have a sidebar note? Mm, yes, you may. Do sidebar you not granted. know who Taylor Kinney is? No. Who is that? You said that on our Instagram post. Who I is know. Taylor Kinney? Because so we just posted The Forest. Yeah. And not a single time did you mention that Taylor Kinney is the hot reporter. I don't know who he is. And then even in the description that you wrote, I had to add in his name. I was like, he's like a famous person. Who? And you wrote down like Natalie Dormer and then like some other guy I, as like being who like wasn't even the lead guy. And I was like, you excluded his name completely, even though he was like the lead person yeah. in the movie. Well, first of all, um, I do. I copy and paste from IMDb whoever's listed first yeah so i who but what have like, i seen him in he's in he's in all like the chicago shows um oh. he was uh, engaged to lady gaga and then really? he's um yeah and he's in a bunch of fucking movies like but he, it's, it's like even like his name is like i don't know like i, I mean, was I, just like do you not know who this person is no idea like when i looked up like i had to look up the characters yeah. which literally i don't see anyone yeah or like don't know anything about the movie and then i was looking at the characters to like post on instagram and i was like the fuck no i had no idea How is this not mentioned at any point in time ever no idea and i and i don't think 
I said a bunch of fucking movies. I think I thought Taylor was a girl in the movie. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who, but like I didn't. Yeah, I had no idea. No, he's a very famous actor. When I, I say. yeah, when I looked at him again, like after you, what's one of Kim's beverages <laughs> is giving her a problem. <laughs> so, so, paper straw has been stuck in the smoothie oh, for a long time, oh. and it's having some issues. <laughs> it's not doing its job. <laughs> um, well, sorry about that. Yeah, I I didn't recognize him as anybody. Um, That's so funny. Yeah. Anyway, hot reporter from the forest. Right. now. So now we're on to hot dad, uh, foxy hot dad. And he seems to be having a blast with his dad. Now. Oh, wait. (laughs) Okay. Go on. Now we're back with dad and daughter. And he is like, the dad is saying to his daughter, to Ely, People know my face and they know I'm here with you. Referring to the people at the restaurant that were like, Ah. you live in our building. And he says, also, can you not see that boy tonight? And she just touches his face really sweetly and walks away. And we're like, I'm going to take that as a no. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, I do what I want. I do what I want, bitch. And so now we see that the dad... It's nighttime, and he is looking through the windows of a gym, an auditorium, a, a workout space. But it like looks like an. It's not like a gym, like twenty four hour fitness. Like it looks like kind of like an old timey workout space, like where Martin Short's character would have worked out from SNL. <laughs> Kim staring at me like a <laughs> like She's, I have like I'm Taylor Kinney. What is happening? <laughs> you just named so many words, I, like. <laughs> A gym, an auditorium. Those are like two different things in my world. And then you're like, but not this gym, but it's a very specific reference to another like gym. An old like, tiny, like an old fashioned gym. Like an old fashioned gym. Okay. So he walks by this and I'm, he's he's watching people through the windows okay. of this gym. And they're doing gym things. Doing gym they're things. They're actually working out yes. as if it's a gym. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the gym is closing, we can see, because the lights start being turned off as there's still one dude in there. And I say kid, but he's like, you know, 17, 18. Okay. And all the lights are being turned off and his friends are still standing outside, like waiting for him, like smoking, like wanting him to hurry up. We see that the kid is not going to be coming out anytime soon because he has been strung up by his feet in the locker room and the door has been locked and dad is in there oh shit he's hung upside down he carefully opens a jar of liquid it's like in a mason jar and it looks clear but it's not water (laughs) it's filled about a quarter of the way up and he places it very very carefully on the bench we don't know what it is but it's seems very delicate or dangerous or something Mm mm-hmm And the friends start banging on the windows of the room where they are, but the glass is frosted, Mm -hmm. which is the only reason that they can't see. They can see shapes, Mm. but they can't see that there's a person in there and their friend is strung up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're just banging on the window being like, hurry up, jerk. But the dad is like freaking out because he's like, I'm caught. Like I'm fucking caught. So the kid who's strung up kind of comes to because remember he like gasses them before he mm-hmm. he kills them and so he starts yelling like help help so now the kids outside are like what is going on and so we hear them start trying to get into the the main door the main gym and dad just sits down and he looks fucking exhausted mm. so he sits down as the kids are trying to break in and the kid who's hung up is like, let me down, let me down. And as he struggles, the jar falls off the bench and onto a jacket and it sizzles the jacket. Hmm? It's acid. Whoa. Kim, what you are the dad. Okay. What does he do? And what do you do? You're about to be caught and your cover is about to be blown. And you're trapped. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, sorry. I'll take it. Sorry. No, uh, no. I didn't even have to that answer. Was a, that was a premature ding. I telepathically told her the correct answer. Oh, yep. And she gave me the points. Yep. Kim's um, higher self answered correctly. <laughs> What am I? Okay, so I'm in a room and the only there's only one door. There's only one door, but there are other alcoves you could get into because it's like a locker room. So it's like, you know, there's where the lockers are, but then there might be you go around a corner and that's where the showers are. And then you might go around another corner and that's when the urinals are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's not a big giant open room. And they're outside the, the one door yeah, that but I they're, can get out of. They're, bang- they're trying to break it down like they're about to get in okay into like the locker room yeah and they're when they get in the first thing they'll see is their friend strung up by his feet right i mean fuck Mm -hmm. all right i guess what i could do is um gonna have to kill this guy okay because kill the strung up dude yeah okay because he knows what who happened. I am. Yeah. yeah and then i'm going to cover my face a little bit with whatever i can and like put a, something over my face okay. um and the, but i'm also going to open the door and immediately throw acid in the face <gasps> of all the guys Ooh. that are there and run away and that's you or him me Okay, what does he do? He, he's gonna, how many guys are outside? Two. That's not too many. Nope. Okay. Hmm. I think that he is gonna hide around one of the corners. Okay. Um, it's two or three. It, I, but it's it's not six. It's two or three. Okay three changes things i i know that's why i'm, I'm like trying to remember <laughs> who i see in my mind's eye but you said he, the one thing you did say was that he hides around the corner yeah okay. i guess i'll say he hides around the corner and waits for them to come in i was gonna say that he like gasses them but it seems hard to do if there's three of them mm, do i have any other weapon things mm, not really uh fuck mm-hmm. good damn yeah i don't like this mm-hmm. okay i'm going to he well i already said what I mean. he is going to i don't know <laughs> i don't know do you guys want to do something holding hands i don't think we do it holding hands because you were so surprised by my answer oh <laughs> <laughs> cheater so it clearly wasn't that <laughs> <laughs> whenever you're like Ooh. okay i'll give you a clue though <laughs> okay one of the things that you are going to do is on the right track okay i mean i guess he can hide and then throw acid at them okay that's all i've got i'm gonna i'm gonna give you one and a half points okay okay So what he does is he does go and hide. He runs around the corner. And as the door is busted open, he picks up the jar of acid and he dumps it on his own face. I was considering that too, but I didn't also, I didn't, I also didn't understand what the, how he would, what that would do. So you'll find out. Okay. And there isn't any reason that you would necessarily know why he did that while you're watching it. But right before he does it, he says, Ely, and then pours it on his face. Mm. So now we're weightlifting with Oscar. And he's so scrawny. (laughs) And he heads into the bathroom afterwards. And he sees something in the urinal. And he sees that it's his pants. (gasps) And somebody motherfucker pissed all over them. What fucking pieces what fucking of garbage assholes. What fucking assholes. Mm. I did that once. Peed on someone's pants. He was being really mean to me and bullying me at the pool. And he dumped a can of orange soda on my head. So I grabbed his pool bag and I went into the girl's bathroom and I threw it in the toilet. Oh, shit. Fuck you, my case. No, I'm sure he's a very nice person now. Yeah. 
but so now it's fucking freezing because it's the 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 snow-capped mountains of sweden and he has to walk home like in his underwear and his boots carrying his pee pants in a plastic bag poor little oscar like i just kids are so fucking mean don't they have like gym sweatpants or something he can wear like i think i think it was all peed on like all of his pants were peed on but i mean like the the school the gym that's true maybe yeah but i guess i don't know ask oscar he was he he got his pants peed on so now we're with ely and she is listening to the news and the news starts talking about an unidentified man who was arrested for murder and attempted murder but they can't id him because of self-inflicted burns Mm. ely goes down to the hospital and she says to it looks like a very deserted hospital but it's i guess it's just nighttime and just not super busy but she goes to the person at the very front and she says that she's looking for her dad the nurse offers to call for her to be taken up to the restricted area because that's he's in the restricted area because he's a criminal and she can't just walk up there. She has to be escorted. And Ely says no. And she walks back outside. And as she walks out, the nurse at the front desk can see that she's barefoot. And so she comes out from around the desk and kind of runs after Ely. But by the time she gets outside, she's gone. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, poor thing. Like, she was going to be like, let me get you some fucking shoes or like, I'll take you to your dad. So as we, the camera's on the face of the nurse who's kind of look now outside and like looking around for Ely. And she's like, poor thing. As she walks back inside, we see something move up the wall of the hospital. Mm. So... The figure is scaling the wall of the hospital. It's Ely. And now we're in the hospital room with dad. And Ely knocks on the window. Uh, The dad gets up out of bed. And we can see that his face is like busted, but only on half of it. And we can't tell how busted it is. Like we can just kind of see that it looks pretty messed up from his own reflection in the mirror. Mm -hmm. So she asks to come in. And he says no, but like can't talk. He like gestures it, says no. But then he opens the window and he leans forward to talk to her. And then we see his face and it is not burned like fire burned. It's like holes in it. Mm -hmm. So like if his mouth is closed, you can still see his teeth through his cheeks. And it's not looking great for him. So he opens the window, but does not invite Ely in. But he leans out the window and opens his neck, like exposes his neck to her. Mm -hmm. And she leans forward and she bites his neck and starts feeding on him. And when she's finished, she just lets him fall forward and he falls out the window to the ground and dies bounces off the awning falls to the ground splat and we get a close-up of his fucking acid burned face and it is also acid burned into my eyeballs forever (laughs) it was so upsetting and then she scuttles away gone whoa dad's dead ely had her food scuttles away so now we are with two people who are lying in bed And it's two people from the restaurant. It's one of the dudes and the blonde woman. And they are just lamenting about the death of Jolke. And they're they're just like, who would fucking kill him? Like, this is just devastating. He was just the nicest guy. So they look really, the dude especially, looks very sort of confused and vengeful about it. Like, he seems like he's not going to sleep for a long time. So... Now we're back with Ely, and Ely shows up at Oscar's window. He's asleep in bed with his back turned to the window. She comes in, or she opens the window, and she says, don't look at me, but invite me in. So he does. She takes all of her clothes off and climbs into bed with him. Whoa. Yeah. And I'm like, hey. But like he doesn't turn over, and she gets behind him like the big spoon. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you're cold as ice. And then he says, do you want to go steady? 
Oh. And she says, I'm not a girl. And he says, do you want to go study or not? And she says, does anything have to change if we go study? And he says, I mean, I don't think so. No. She says, then okay. It'll be you and me. And they fall asleep holding hands. It's so fucking cute. Next morning, Oscar wakes up, no Ely. But she did leave a note that made him smile. But we don't know what the note says. Uh We just see him pick it up and he smiles. So now we're back at school and there's a bunch of kids going ice skating for (laughs) P.E. But they're like ice skating on a lake, like just a giant frozen lake where I'm like, this sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. That's Sweden, baby. Woof, It's scary. So the teacher is just like, beware of the hole in the ice. And I'm like, "Ah, okay. And we see the bully say to the other bullies as he's looking at Oscar, fancy a swim. Because Oscar Mm. is like over by the hole, but just kind of like poking around. Like Oscar's always just kind of by himself. Mm -hmm. And he's just kind of like poking or whatever. And he picks up this red stick. Just poking about, whatever, whatever. We see that the place where he got the stick, the log where he found it, looks very familiar. Mm -hmm. So here come the bullies to fuck with him. He says, the bully says to him, or Oscar says to the bullies, he's going to hit them with the stick if they do anything. And the bully says, I'm going to push you. And you aren't going to do a thing about it. And we're really freaked out now because he's literally like back up against the hole. Like if he takes five steps backwards, he falls through the ice. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where are the teachers once again? Why are these children not being properly supervised? How big is this lake? They're just fucking skating around. There's no there's no orange cones around the hole. They're just saying, hey, there might be a hole out here. Why don't you watch out for it? Got where it. are the supervisors? <laughs> so then we see we kind of cut away from this scene for a second. And we see two little boys who had like gone off to pee because they go up to the teacher and they're like, we have to pee. And the teacher's like, there's trees. Go, (laughs) go pee somewhere. Terrible teaching. So as they go to pee, they see something. Cut back to the bullies. The head bully is trying to get the other bullies to fuck with him. Like his sub bullies. Uh They don't want to. They're really uncomfortable. They almost look like they're about to cry. So the head bully walks a few steps towards Oscar. What does Oscar do? And what do you do? I hit him with my stick and run away. You do? Yes. Okay. Skate away, you mean. Skate away. Yeah. Right. Watch out for that hole. There's no cones around it, so you really got to keep your eyes open. (laughs) You know what? I'm going to try to give it to Oscar again. I'm going to say he does the same. Or at least he hits him. That (sighs) point was for Oscar. Ooh. He did it. You run the risk of being dead though for doing the same thing and you'll see why later shit so oscar oscar pusses up he uh fucking takes the switch and he winds up and he hits him as hard as he fucking can in the ear and it was actually really good acting because like he hits him in the ear and you know like right before something hurts really bad like you're like that just happened and then it hurts really bad yeah so the bully gets hit and he kind of stands there and then he just like very slowly like crumples to the ground and is like "Eh," and just starts squealing (laughs) like a little bitch so and oscar could not be happier like he's just like i'm the fucking shit i kick this dude's ass and like of course the sub bullies don't really do anything like they're just being little babies so as this is all happening we see what the boys saw. So we have some kid got hit by a switch and these little kids found a frozen body in the ice. (laughs) So the body is being excavated with a crane and it's all frozen and terrifying with the head facing the wrong direction. (sighs) So now we're back home and the mom is on the phone with the dad telling the dad, like, do you know what your son did today? And Oscar is just in the other room, like smiling. And he's so happy and he gets on the phone with his dad and he's just like, yeah, what's up? Like, he just totally (laughs) he's like, what you going to do about it? And doesn't give a fuck. 
So the next day, Oscar is in his little weightlifting class. And now he's in the pool. And I wrote, gym class is awesome. Like, they just get to, like, go ice skating on lakes and swim and weightlift. It's awesome. And we see that Ely is watching him through the window. She then comes in, like, after he's all changed and everybody has left. And he sneaks off with her to this, like, abandoned part of the gymnasium. Okay. Like that is like an unused storage space but like very unused because he's like decorated it with like posters of the clash like it's and he's just like look at my look at my pad like he's like Uh, uh, uh. look at my cool place here and they are listening to music and she's like really proud of him like she's just like you kick their butts and uh she's just looking around the room he's got it all decorated And he's sitting in this like old ratty chair as she's walking around looking at all his stuff. And he pulls out his special knife and he holds it in his hand and he slices his own hand open. (gasps) Oh, no. And he offers his hand to her (laughs) and he says, let's make a pact. She fucking freaks out and she backs away from the blood. The blood is now dripping Ah. on the ground. She jumps down and she starts licking it up. Kim, does he leave? (laughs) And do you leave? I'm going to say that he does not. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave. One point for you. He also leaves. Okay. Because she looks crazy. Like her face comes up from licking blood off the floor and she looks, she still looks human. Like they didn't do any like Buffy the Vampire Slayer makeup or anything, but she looks almost like a, a, like a middle-aged man almost. Like her face has, is like very sort of muscular looking now and weird and creepy looking. And she's like, she's like, go away. And then he kind of stands there for too long. So she runs off and then he runs off crying. So she runs outside and she scales a tree to like hide from him. And she's just like breathing really heavy. Now we're back with the restaurant friends and they are all in Catman's apartment and they're trying to figure out how to avenge Joke. And as they're trying to figure it out, Bo snaps at Blondie, like says something like shitty to her. And she gets really offended. They've clearly been drinking, especially the Bo. Like he's been drinking and the cat man is just holding his cats, looking, you know, nervous Mm -hmm. like a cat. And he runs after her. And as she walks off, she turns around and she's about to like walk back into the apartment building. And all of a sudden, swoosh, here comes Ellie down on top of her. And Ellie has pinned her to the ground, bitten her neck, and is sucking her blood. Bo comes up behind her and kicks her off. And now they're all coming to, like, see what happened. The woman is still alive, and Ellie runs off. But they saw her. Mm -hmm, Like, they mm -hmm. saw that this was, like, a little girl who did this. So the woman is, is... okay like she's making sound she's she's conscious it looks like it was just a bite but like she couldn't get much blood out of her so the next shot is we're back in the woman's apartment and she's laying in bed clearly like injured she's got a big bandage on her neck and she's like been sleeping and she has all of her blinds closed and as the sun is coming up a beam of light comes in And it hits her finger and we see that her finger starts to turn to ash and it wakes her up and she's like, fuck. So she wakes up and she's like, what was that? And she opens the blinds completely and is like pushed back into the room and closes them really fast. Mm. So now she goes into the bathroom and she looks at the wound on her neck like she pulls the bandage off and she smells the blood on the bandage and licks her lips and then is like what the fuck Uh oh yeah so now we're back with oscar and his dad he's now visiting his dad again in the in the the 
snow oasis and they're playing games and in walks someone all we can see is their feet and on their feet is just Birkenstocks and socks and they're covered in snow Mm -hmm. not proper weather attire the camera pans up and we see that it's his dad's friend and Oscar seems super annoyed that he's there and it's very awkward like the friend just sits down at the table where they've been playing cards and is kind of just like so how's it going and Oscar's like you're interrupting so then the dad gets up and he gets booze out of the cabinet and Oscar is like are we still playing and he's like no we have a guest So the evening goes on, Oscar is being ignored, and his dad and his friend are just getting fucking shit-faced sitting at the table together. So he pulls out the note from Ely, and we see that it says, it was the note that she left before, I must be gone and live or stay and die. Yours, Ely. Mm -hmm. So Oscar reads it, and he decides to run away back home. So he hitchhikes back to his mom's place in the middle of the fucking night-night time, but arrives home safely. Nothing happens. <laughs> just he leaves. Dad doesn't say, where are you? Mom isn't like, why are you home? It's just that's the end of it. So he goes back home. So now we're back with the blonde lady, Blondie. And she shows up at the door of Catman. And her beau is there too. And she looks rough. Mm-hmm. And as she walks in, the cats are losing their fucking minds Mm -hmm. losing their minds and they all start attacking her like crazy Uh and the bow is like what is going on and Catman just locks himself out on the porch (laughs) and just like watches like what's happening (laughs) so she runs out of the hospital like thrashing trying to throw all these cats off so now who's the asshole because if a vampire comes into my house I'm protected you are not (laughs) That's all I want to say about that. <laughs> Who's the asshole now? I bet a vampire could take your two cats. Uh, well, this vampire couldn't take the. Th- I guess when you them. upgrade to thirty, great, I'll you'll get started. Be protected. I'll get started. So um, they all start attacking her like crazy. Now we cut to her on a gurney at the hospital, and she's like thrashing around. Like they called the, you know, they called the hospital, and they've strapped her down to a gurney, and she's thrashing around like psycho. Now we're back home and Oscar knocks on Ely's door because he just hitchhiked back home and he's in her apartment and he says she smells funny again. So he comes in the front door, but she doesn't want him to come through the second door into the main living area. So it's almost like there's a door that brings you into the foyer of the apartment and then there would be a second door to go into the living space. And she closes the door like between them but it's a glass door so they can still see each other Mm -hmm. and they're looking at each other through the glass and he says are you a vampire and she says i live off blood and he says are you dead and she says no can't you tell and he says are you old and she says i'm 12 i've been 12 for a long time Mm. they look at each other and then she lets him in So now he's just kind of looking around her apartment and he looks at a table of tchotchkes and he sees this like really ornate egg. And she's like, do you see that egg? If you sold it, you could buy a whole nuclear power plant. And I'm like, that's what what you want to buy? Like not like a mansion (laughs) or a yacht or something? She's like, you could buy a whole power plant. (laughs) So she says, put your finger on it. So he puts his finger on it, and as he does it, it crumbles into a million pieces and what? reveals treasure inside. Oh, treasure. Like, I was like, treasure. So she says he doesn't have to do his paper route the next morning and hands him a bunch of money. Whoa. Okay. And he says, you stole this from the people you killed. And she says, no, people gave it to me. And he says, I want to go home, if you'll let me. She does, and he leaves. But I'm like, why are you being so salty? Like, she just tried to give you money. Like, that's not how manifesting works. You just told the universe (laughs) that you don't want any money. So now we're in the hospital with blonde woman and her beau. And he's sitting next to her. She's strapped to the bed. And he's talking about, like, just kind of talking her ear off, you know, talking about, I'm going to sell this stamp that I have that's worth 80,000 Swedish monies. 
whatever Swedish people use. Right. And then she says, she interrupts him and she says, that kid must have infected me with something and I don't want to live anymore. And the bow is like, don't be ridiculous. Like, you're going to be fine. So it's now the next day at the hospital and the aide walks in and the bow is still there and the aide is unlocking her from her, you know, she's strapped down and says, you get to go home today. And she grabs his hand and she says, can you just open the blinds? And he's like, sure. So he opens the blinds and she fucking ignites. Whoa. Like ignites, like fire up to the ceiling, like Woo. roaring sound. And they're just like, this isn't what I expected. <laughs> so she's like fucking burned to a crisp. So now we're at the school with the bullies and the head bully is getting roughed up by his big brother. Okay. And Oscar is watching um, and yep. he's getting, you know, kind of, tossed around the ear where his where he got hurt and is like trying to keep a fun face about it but he's clearly learned it somewhere so now we're back at those who are bullied bully as hurt they people say. hurt people yes so back at oscars ely knocks on the door and she says you have to invite me in and he gets salty and is like well there's no barrier just come in look you can put your hand right through it and she goes okay so she walks in Nothing happens. Okay. So we're kind of like, I guess she just thought she had to be invited in all the time. But didn't he invite her in already? Mm-hmm. In the well, window? I think that in this particular lore, you have to be invited in every time. Oh, okay. It's not like a blanket invitation like in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I think it's like okay. each invitation is a new. So then she turns around and all of a sudden, blood starts seeping out of all of her pores, her eyeballs, ah, every single ah, pore in her body, her hair, everything. Ah, and he screams and grabs her and says, come in, come in, come in, come in. It stops. Hmm. And he hugs her. And he says, what are you? And she says, I'm just like you. And he says, I don't kill people. And she says, but you want to. I have to. You want to for revenge. Ooh. Be me for a little while. Then she touches him. She's still covered in a bunch of blood that was seeping through her. She touches him. I know this from the book that she's basically putting memories into his head, like showing mm. her, showing him who, who she was kind of thing. So the next scene, she's now taken a shower. She's all cleaned up all of the blood off of her and he puts on music. They're in his apartment but his mom isn't home and they're just bopping around a little and he says you can wear one of my mom's dresses so she goes into the room and he decides he wants to peek in and he sees her naked body just before he, she puts the thing on and where her vagina should be is just a sewn up scar <laughs> as if something had been removed what? so he's startled she doesn't notice she comes out of the room doorbell rings it's his mom she jumps out the window and scales the wall back over to his place but nothing is said about what he saw Sheesh. so i did some deep dives into that which i will talk about in our next postmortem of like what the fuck that was but i'll talk about that later so now we're in ely's apartment and Oscar is in his, but he peeks in on his mom who's asleep and goes over to Ely's. And he's going to go sleep there. So the next day, we're at the overpass and we're at the blood stain where Joka was killed. And we see that the bow is looking at where they died. Back in Ely's apartment at the same time, Oscar wakes up on the floor at Ely's and there's a note that says, I'm in the bathroom. Don't come in. Want to hang out tonight? I really like you. Love, Ely. Mm. And he walks up to the bathroom door and he listens and he can't hear anything. Outside, we see that the bow is walking into the apartment building, walking up the stairs and he looks super drunk and sad and mad. And he looks up at Ely's window and he goes in. So he's now in Ely's apartment looking around. 
He pulls down all the window blockers, looking around in the kitchen. Ely is nowhere to be found, nor is Oscar. But he goes into the kitchen, and Bo grabs a knife. We then see that Oscar had been hiding under a table, and he follows Bo out of the kitchen. Bo picks the bathroom lock. No one's inside. The lights are off, but there's a blanket over the tub. So he walks over to the tub, and he uncovers the blanket, and Ely is asleep in a little ball in there. Oscar comes to the door, and as he's about to stab her, Kim, what does Oscar do, and what do you do? As he's about to what? As Bo is about to stab Ely, what does Oscar do, and what Um, do you do? Stops him. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Um, Okay. He's about to stab her. Um... I don't know if I, do I have things? Well, you always have your little knife on you. Okay. I think that he and I will both take our little knife and, and stab him first. I'm going to give you two half points, which equals one ding. So right before he's about to stab Ely, he realizes he can't see very well. So he rips the shit off the windows. As he does this, Oscar says, Ely, wake up. Ely wakes up, growls, and fucking just eats the dude alive. And like clearly a superhuman strength because she like drags him back into the bathroom. And Oscar just kind of stands there and is just like, you do you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and he's freaked out, but he's definitely like, you know, I mean, he was about to kill you and I'm yeah. super into you. So let's let's do this. So she comes up behind him after she's done eating and she just gives him the sweetest hug from behind and just says, thank you. And she says, I have to go away now. Mm -hmm. She turns him around and she kisses him Mm -hmm. on the mouth, but she's covered in blood. blood. (laughs) And so he just does. I mean, his first he's like, this is my first First kiss. kiss. I'm not going to fuck it up. (laughs) But I'm like, you are literally eating another man's blood. (laughs) In your mouth right now. So she presumably leaves at that moment, like kisses him and leaves. Because he now goes back to his apartment and he is despondent and his mom is freaking out and he doesn't even care because she didn't know where he was. Like he oh, right. he slept over at Ely's apartment. The mom doesn't know who Ely is. Like she doesn't have any interaction with, with her. So she's just like freaking out. He just ignores her, walks into his room and and shuts the door. And he looks out the window and Ely is driving away in a cab. Mm. Well, she's not driving. The cab driver is driving. Next day, Oscar is crying in his room, looking out the window and the phone rings. Oscar answers and it's one of the sub bullies. Mm -hmm. And the sub bully says, are you are you coming to practice tonight? And Oscar's like, I don't know. And he's like, um, I just want you to know I think it was really cool what you did to Head Bully. Oh. He had it coming. Mm-hmm. So Kim, do you trust him? And does Oscar? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, Baby Velociraptor. I... <laughs> In this moment, I did until you asked me if I should. And then I was like, God damn it. I'm so trusting. <laughs> well, you can trust him if you want. Um, I'm going to say he does. That Oscar does? Yeah. Okay. Practice for what? what? Do we know what they're talking about? Like weightlifting or like, What's it's like something? they all go hang out at this gymnasium type situation. Okay. That's like not necessarily during school. Like they're all just kind of like little gym rats at 12. Interesting. But there's uh, adults there instructing them as well. It's very confusing. Who knows uh, what the sweets? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking little dicks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to say we both trust him. Okay. Question mark? Zero points. Fuck because you. Because as the conversation goes on, 
Oh, no, wait. You said we both trust him? Yeah. So, I'm sorry. You get one point because Oscar trusts him. But as he's talking, we now see from the bully's perspective that he's standing in a payphone with the other two bullies with him and the head bully's older brother egging him on. What little fucking jerk! Yeah. So we now go to the bathhouse and Oscar... <laughs> I don't know why I called it. It's a bathhouse now. Um, And Oscar's in the locker room. And phone bully waits for him to leave the bathroom. But like is hiding, you know, and like waits for like sees that Oscar is left. And so then he goes out and the other bully comes out of the stall too. So they were all waiting for like the room to clear out. (sighs) And they grab some liquid and they start dumping a bunch of liquid on all of Oscar's clothes. And we don't really, they're the worst. We don't really know what they're doing yet, though. So then the phone bully comes out and Oscar is in the pool doing like some treading water exercises. And he calls the coach away and says there's a fire outside. So the coach runs out. They've put a whole bunch of like Oscar's clothes into like a bin and lit it on fire. So now the coach leaves and is like, the motherfucker, I have to go fucking call the the cop fire. Call Huff McGruff. Huff McGruff. Get over here. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> um so the phone bully is now standing over Oscar, who's still in the pool. In come the other two bullies and mm-hmm. brother bully. Mm-hmm. And Brother Bully terrifies all the other kids and is like, get out of here. So he basically has cleared this Olympic size pool area of mm-hmm. everyone except the bullies, himself, and Oscar, who is in the pool, mm-hmm. in the deep end. And the Brother Bully says, if you can stay under there, underwater, for three minutes, I'll just nick you. What? With a knife. He's holding a knife. If you can't, I'll cut an eye out. An eye for my brother's ear. Fuck you. Fuck you. So, Kim, what does Oscar do? And what do you do? (sighs) You're Um, in like a 50-yard pool. Like, it's a huge pool. I'm going (laughs) to swim away. (laughs) Poorly. I need to <laughs> make fun of that. <laughs> I'm going to dive under. Swim away. And it'll and look graceful and purposeful. <laughs> and it'll be beautiful. And practiced. <laughs> I'm going to say he tries to go underwater for three minutes. Oscar does? Breath. Yeah. Okay. How about you, boo? Oh, you swam away. Yeah. I'm going to give you a, I'm going to give you two points. Because I think swimming away does just as well in this situation. So what happens is Oscar just kind of lets him do it and is kind of like, I guess I'll just try and hold my breath for three minutes. Like he's clearly, but we've seen Oscar do this before. Like when the, when the bullies came up and like held him by the neck, like he was just kind of like resigned to his fate sort of. So the other bullies seem really not into this at all, especially when the, brother bully is holding him underwater like for real including the head bully like the head bully is like "Ah, this is uncomfortable so the bully's in the water no he's above him in the water like on the side but he's grabbed oscar's in the deep end and so like oscar can't touch so he just grabs the top of oscar's head all of his hair and just pushes him under and is holding him under and all of the other bullies are like super bummed out and like oscar now the camera is under the water with Oscar. Mm -hmm. So we're just looking at Oscar's face and the hand on his head. And it looks like Oscar is about to pass out Mm. for sure. But as we're underwater, all of a sudden we see feet being dragged through the water. And Oscar can't see any of this. He's about to pass out and his eyes are closed. But there's feet being dragged through the water and then a head falls to the bottom of the pool Shit. then the hand that's holding oscar's head just becomes detached and uh, falls to the bottom of the pool yes oscar is then pulled up it's ely mm. and they just look at each other cut to 
Oscar sitting on a train by himself. No one with him looking out the window. Sitting in the car alone next to his, you know, trunk of clothes. And he taps on the trunk in Morse code. And then the trunk taps back. Oh, shit. The end. Aww. So are they like going away together? Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, Ely is, I mean, Oscar is now Ely's old man. That wasn't her dad. Mm. That was a man that she met. He's a man, man. Right, yeah. right, right. right. Uh, that she met when she was, when he was probably 12. Oh. But he grew up and she didn't. Right, 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 right. So now it's like, okay, it makes more sense for us to be dad and daughter. Yeah. Rather than life partners, which we were before. Right. And so now she's just starting the cycle all over again. Wow. Yeah. Is this let me in or let the right one in? This is let the right one in. The, the American one is let me, is let me in. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. I know. It's nice. a really weird movie because it's like a pretty disturbing premise but also like you're shipping these two little babies to like right have their little love affair it's really new term that we learned uh, that the millennials are saying i know kim we have to keep up with the with the kids we don't have to (laughs) we don't have to (laughs) so yeah that's let the right one in oh let me count your points that's the thing we do yeah i know that wasn't great. I um, I'm a little rusty. Justin, can you believe it's almost time? Time for what? The 2019 live stream for the Cure. This is our third year hosting this amazing event with every single cent going toward cancer research. The Cancer Research Institute funds research into immunotherapy to create a future immune to all forms of cancer. And this amazing nonprofit organization is rated over 92% by CharityNavigator.org and puts 88 cents of every dollar toward cancer research. Last year, thanks to an amazing team of collaborators, fans, supporters, and listeners, we raised over $5,000 in 30 hours on the air. And this year, with your help, we're going for our biggest goal yet. Tune in May 17th to the 19th on twitch.tv slash Epic Film Guys for 40 hours of amazing content as we try to reach $7,500. For more information or to find out how you can become a part of the event, please visit www.livestreamforthecure.com. Together, we can make a difference. Okay, Ms. Burns. Yes. You didn't do as bad as you think you did. I mean, your dead or lives were not great, <laughs> as usual. But you got 12 out of 22. Mm. So here's the one that I gave you. I had originally said that Ely was alive, but she's not really. Yeah. So I actually don't remember if you said dead or alive, but I gave you a point because it was like, Sweet. it's not clear. So you got half of those right, sort of. And then... And then you did well. You didn't do badly on the rest of the questions. I wouldn't say 12 out of 22 is great. <laughs> <laughs> for you. It's Yeah, fine. I mean, I have high expectations for myself. Yeah. But you see what I mean? The choices are tough in this one. Yeah, yeah. It it's, was hard to yeah. so, figure it out. So that's one of my favorite movies. Sweet. Thanks for sharing with me. You're welcome. Do we have anything else? I don't think so. I don't know what we do in these things. Well, I would like to direct you to our social meds, as always. KK Sam Podcast. Yep. On all of the things. Also, if you want to hear what we have to say in our postmortem videos, you can sign up for our Patreon. We also have some other sweet perks that you can some... avail yourself of. What were you calling them before? Bone con. Bonus bone content. Con. We got some sweet bone con bone coming con. at ya. We got a nice talk with Huff McGruff coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. He's um, our special guest on our bone con. As a guest. And then we also have some sweet merch that you can model. Yeah. Some sweet merch, bro. Who is this that I is talking know. right you now? You could probably see yourself out. I will though. see myself out. Um, so on that I note. I guess we'll both see ourselves out. Yeah. This has been Kim and Kat Stay Alive. Maybe. So until next week. Stay Stay alive. alive. Goodbye. Bye. Let go.
ghosted me. I'm, I'm done. done. <laughs>